Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video, we are going to look at one of my tricky questions in a new series that I am doing, focusing in on some of the trickier, harder questions that we see in exams with often a little sneaky question in there that makes it really challenging for us to do well. Um, and in particular, this video is going to focus in on the eye and pie charts and drawing pie charts because I think many of us don't know how to draw a pie chart and we're scared that if we come across one in the final exam, we don't know what to do. And so I'm going to walk you through exactly what you need to give just in case it shows up in a test or in a final exam. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you are subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. Now, if you want to pause the video now, attempt the question first, then do so. Otherwise, I'm going to walk you through it and then show you how to answer all of the questions. So, Let's go through the question. It says, the table below indicates the percentage of visually impaired people in the world suffering from visual defects. And we've got blindness, long-sightedness, short-sightedness, and then other. Moving on to our first question, it says, which visual defect in the table is most common among the world population? So what they're asking there, I think is very straightforward. Who has the highest percentage? Who is the most common? And if we look over here, the visual defect with the highest percentage is going to be long sightedness. Easy peasy one on that one. Let's move on to our next question, number two. It says, in some cases uh, where people are blind, the condition is caused by cataracts. Number A asks us to explain why people with cataracts may become blind. Now, you are going to need some content knowledge in order to answer this first question. It is an explain question. So remember, whenever we do an explain question, we need a statement and a reason. Now, this one is out of two, which means you only need one reason. But if it's out of three, then you need to provide two reasons when answering it. So when we create our statement, our statement is telling us what the cataract is and then the reason tells us why we are blind. So what is a cataract? It is when the lens is milky or we use a fancier word like opaque, which basically means it's cloudy. You can't see through it. That's our statement. And so if we are telling me what cataracts is as the statement, then tell me the reasoning for being blind. Well, if the lens is milky, then light can't pass through it. And then we could say, therefore, we are blind. Okay, that gets you your two out of two. Okay, let's move on to our next question. It says, state one way in which cataracts can be treated. So cataracts are treated with surgery. We remove them. That's the main way that we get rid of them. Again, that's just a content knowledge question. It's not something um, that you can select out of the table. You're going to need to study that and know that. For question three, it says, explain why long-sighted people need to wear glasses with biconvex lenses as a corrective measure. Now, we've got a lot to unpack here because I want to point something out. Number one, I want to point out the mark allocation. It's out of four. And it's an explain question. Now, if it's an explain question for four marks, that means, everybody, you are going to have to give me a statement with three separate reasons, okay? Three separate reasons. So that means you're going to have to have quite a long explanation. But wait, it's a little bit more complicated than that because you also need to know what is long-sightedness and you need to know what it means to be a biconvex lens. And some of you are probably look, reading this thinking, I don't know what either one of those things are, okay? So let's break down the first bit. Long-sighted means people who can see far away, okay, long-sighted, but not close up. So it means that they have to wear lenses in their glasses that allow them to see close. 
Now, what does biconvex mean? Bi means two, okay? And convex means the lens bulges out. So if this is my lens, it bulges out like that. That is biconvex. Biconcave looks like this. Concave means it sinks inwards, okay? So this is biconvex. This is biconvex. Cave. And they've just told us that they need biconvex lenses. So now what you have to do is say, explain why long sighted people need to wear glasses with biconvex lenses as a corrective measure. So, how are we going to construct this answer? Let's get rid of all of this here so we can write along the side. Keeping in mind, we've got to do that whole statement reason, reason, right? So, let's go in with our first statement. So our statement needs to answer something about what long-sighted people are. That's the statement. So people who are long-sighted, it means their lens is less convex. If their lens is less convex, we have to try and make it more convex, right? That's why you're using a biconvex lens. That's what you're trying to do. So that's our statement. Now we need to come in with our reasoning. If the lens is less convex, then the image falls, this is important now, behind the retina. Okay? Now what does it mean to fall behind the retina? Well, if this is a cross-section through your eye and the retina and the light that's moving through your eye like this, it should focus on the back of your eye. It should focus over here with normal sight. But if you have different sight problems, then the image forms behind the retina, which means behind it like this, or in front of it, which means over here. So what's happening in this instance with long-sightedness is the image is forming behind the retina, so you have a blurred image. So because of that, our reasoning now for the biconvex lenses is there's going to be more refractive power. And if there's more refractive power, our final reason, a clear image will form on the retina and that's how we get four out of four okay that one is a tricky one it's a very sticky one and i can see why many people might have not got four out of four because you weren't thinking about what you need to say but please use my method over here of the statement and reasons to guide you through write the statement telling the marker what is the thing you are talking about. So in this case, long-sightedness, what is it? And then you're going to give me your reasoning for saying why long-sighted is the way it is. And if we use biconcave, uh, or bi sorry, biconvex lenses, what do they do? They make it more refractive. And why do they do it? Because it's going to clear the image up, make it nice and clear for them to see. Okay, right. Let's move on to the next question before we get to the dreaded pie chart right at the very end of this section. It says, name a visual defect that is characterized by an uneven cornea or an uneven lens. And that's going to be astigmatism. Okay. And astigmatism, uh, by the way, and this is just a little bit of extra information that I wanted to tell you because I feel that it's important. But... Um, if they draw you an eye like this from the side and they say that the light moves into the eye like this and they tell you that the light on the either side has two focal points, one there and one there, that's how you know someone has astigmatism. That is very different to the light falling behind the retina or in front of it. That's when you have long uh, sightedness and short sightedness, just as I mentioned now. Now, for, with no further ado, let's get to the question. I know you're all dreading if it shows up in the final exam, a pie chart. Draw a pie chart to represent the data in the table for six marks. 
I'm going to go on to um, the next page and I'm going to draw it out for you. I'm going to show you how to calculate everything and how to convert these values um, so that we can make it into a pie chart. All right, so here are our values and we're going to turn this into a pie chart. So first things first, you're going to do some calculations. Now, they have given you the percentage already done for you. You see it's calculated in percent already. I'm going to teach you what if it isn't in percentage? For example, if this if this was not already calculated in percentage, what are you what are you going to do? Okay, because that can happen. So all you need to do to make it into a percentage is let's say they said that there are two people with blindness um, out of a total of let's say mm, let's go three hundred right? All you need to do is go 2 divided by 300 times by 100 and that will give you a percentage um, and that should be uh, 2 divided by 300 times by 100 gives us 0, 0,66%. It's a very small percentage, right? Then what you do to make that a degree on... Um, your pie chart is you would go 0, 0,66 divided by 100 times by 360 because that's how many um, degrees there are in a uh, circle. And our answer is 2,4 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to say that again. This is if they haven't told you the percentage and instead, they've said two out of 300 people have this problem. That's how you're going to calculate your degrees. However, they have already done the percentage for us. So, everybody, they've done some of the hard lifting for us. So, all we need to do now in terms of calculations is just take these percentages and turn them into degrees. So all we're going to do for blindness, I'm just going to put it for the letter B, is we're going to go 2 over 100 times by 360. And that's going to give us, let's see, 2 divided by 100 times by 360 gives me 7,2 degrees. Let's do the next one for long sightedness. It's going to be 64 over 100 times by 360. Why 360? Because that's how many degrees there are in a circle. Um, and I suggest that if you do get uh, decimals, that you round it up or you keep it to two decimal places only. Okay. I'm going to do the rest for you as well now um, so that you can see how I got them all. So short-sightedness is going to be 30 over 100 times by 360, which gives us, let's see, 108 degrees. And the last one is uh, other, and that's going to be 4 over 100 times by 360. Yes, you must show all your working out. That's how you get the marks, everybody, at the end of the year. And in your exams at school. Okay, right. So now you've done your calculations. Now, in terms of drawing the actual pie chart itself. Number one, every single pie chart must have a heading. And your heading must have all of the variables in it. Okay. So in this case, the variables are the visual defect and the people percentage. You are now going to take your compass, which means you need a um, you need a protractor, everybody, um, at the end of the year. So keep that in mind. You're going to need it. And we are going to draw our circle, right? And um, you need to make sure that you have your compass and protractor with you to do this. There will be a small dot in the center from your compass pushing into the page that you will then use. That is where you are going to line up your protractor with the center dot. 
and you'll be able to draw a line going down, right? And then we're going to draw the first 7,2 degrees. So it'll be something like that. I don't have my protractor now with me, but it'd be like that. The next one is a really big chunk. It's 230, so it's... It's quite an enormous chunk. I'm going to say that that right there is about 230 degrees. That's probably not enough, actually. That's probably 180. Let's get rid of that. Let's move it over a bit. There we go. And then we've got 108 and 14. 14 is a very small percentage. It's about there. So our pie chart would look something like that. Now, this is the important bit. You've done all the plotting, right? But now, how do you label this? And this is key. This is why we lose marks with pie charts. You must put the uh, labels and the percentages in their sectors, right? So, for example, our first one over here uh, was 2%, um, which I actually think is, is too wide, to be honest. It's probably... This is more likely the 4% one, and this is the 2% one. And then this is the 64% one, and this is the 30% one, right? So you've got your percentages in your pie chart, but you also um, need to label them. And so to do that, there are two ways you can do that. The first thing is you can actually just label them in the sector itself. And so we just write here long-sighted, right? Or... Um, you could have a pattern and you could have a key. So over here, you could have like a little pattern and you then draw a pattern in this. The problem with drawing with patterns like is that it gets in the way of like all of your words, as you can see, like I have to go around the word so that I can still read it. So it becomes quite difficult. And I suggest uh, not using that, but rather just labeling the actual sectors with their percentage like this. And then with a label like this. And that's the best thing to do. I'm going to show you now what the memo looks like so you can see a better version of this pie chart. So here is the memo uh, for the first few questions we did, including our pie chart. So there's a better visual for you to see. There is a calculations at the bottom here, which we can see we got out right. I'm just going to show you the marking criteria. So number one, you get one mark for drawing the pie chart. Two, you get one for your heading. The correct calculations to determine the uh, proportion. So that's a tick for all uh, the correct calculations. Um, two for everything correct. One for some of them correct. And then the actual plotting, which is the letter P. And essentially, if you plot one section correctly, you get one mark. If you plot all of them correctly, you get two marks. So that's how you get a total of six. You can see they've put their labels on the outside over here like this. You can also put them over here, like in the actual pie chart. Although the blindness one is quite tricky, right? Because it's it's a word that's quite long. So to fit it in that space, you might need to add a little label line like they've done over here where they've labeled and, and sort of put the line down to the sector that you are talking about. But I hope that this helped, um, especially if you haven't done a pie chart in a very long time. Um, make sure to go back and try and attempt it yourself and know how to use your protractor and your compass. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I will see you all again soon, everybody. Bye.